Video games started off simple and have become more complex over the years, and it has taken many skilled people to create and play them. Video games haven't been around for all that long, but over the past few years have reached very complicated levels. As the industry gets older, it has been getting more, comp more complex, and I believe that one of the biggest reasons is that you have games today being developed by people who grew up playing games. When video games first came out, screens had bigger pixels and not a lot of information could be transferred to the screens, so games weren't as detailed. But over the years, the visual quality has become better since the screens had smaller pixels. One of the very first video games was Tennis for Two. It was very large, since the components for the Iskoskoscope were very large. In the game world, many industries compete to create the best video games technology. Sega was a company that only created games and couldn't keep up with the demands for the new system technology. Their death throes was with the Dreamcast and after that they just they, there's really no Sega anymore. After that, Microsoft wanted to get in on video game production since it was a very good way to earn money. So they created the Xbox. Since this was their very first system, it had many problems that were overlooked and caused many problems in the overall production. Since Microsoft created computers, most of Xbox was based on computers. And since it was hooked up to the internet, many people could hack into Xbox and cause problems. Also, the fan was bad quality and couldn't keep the system cooled, so many of the systems malfunctioned and melted. Even though the first Xbox wasn't all that great, the, they had the benefit of being controlled by, well, by Microsoft. So they had oodles of money at their, at their disposal. So I think that they had the luxury of... of have it, it, it of it being okay to kind of flop the first time. Um, with Sega, they had a they had a really good run. They had a really good system to begin with, and they just weren't able to keep up with the market. Unfortunately, they did not have that kind of juggernaut of a company standing behind them, throwing money at them like Xbox. Just recently, PlayStation Three Online was hacked and went down for more than a month. The problem was that hackers could have stolen credit card information and this upset many gamers. When creating a video game, it can be easier or harder depending on the type, quality, and time you put into creating. When creating a game, there are different formats for different systems. For example, the Wii, you will need to add motion sensors so that the Wii controllers work. In the DS, you add touch sensors, and in almost every game, you will need to add what the buttons on the controllers do. The details in the games vary depending on the quality setup. Grass is an example of the different ways to create scenery, from blocky to 2D to 3D. Creating characters are even harder, depending on quality. If you create hair that flows with the wind, Every separate piece must be told to do a different thing. Also, clothing, mouth, eyes, and body movement must be set up. On a lesser quality, it could be easier, but still complicated. I fear people being like, oh, well, I like to play video games. I can sit in a chair with a controller in my hand all day. I can do that. And then they, they get into the office, and then it's, it's nothing like that. It is actually work. Yeah. Many people that don't know a lot about video games may think that it takes one person to create a game, but that is not the case. It can take up to 100 people to create just one game. To create a video game, you will need video game designers, video game programmers, animators, audio engineers, writers, translators, testers, and technical support specialists to help out the people who play the game. You will need 10 or more people for each one of these jobs. To count up, the least people would be 80. It's not easy to get a job in the game industry. 
Many people think it doesn't take a lot, but this is not the case at all. To begin with, you will need to know how to program C++ and Java. You also need to be good at math. In school, you'll need one, at least one of the following if you even hope to get a job. A 3D graphic education, a degree in work field, computer science. You must study software engineering. I highly, I highly recommend, highly suggest doing uh, computer programming because the logic is absolutely needed and the, the scripting, being able to understand program flow and then relate that to whatever scripting language that, they, that they'll use it, that is absolutely invaluable. All of the people who, who have trouble are the people who don't have that background. 70% of people in the game industry have a college degree, and half of that have masters. These are not necessary, but it's always a good idea to know about them. To stay working on video games, you will need to keep up with the newest type and quality. So the more advanced others get, the more you must learn too. You must compete against others to create the best game. When people call themselves a true gamer, they think that you just need to play at least one or two games. The, the gamer nation has increased in, in population drastically over the last couple of years. And I think because of that, there has been a lot of change in who a gamer is or what a gamer is than you know, five or ten years ago. To be a player, you must know a good game from a bad game and know how to take a challenge and not cheat. Keeping up with the latest news also helps to know what's the best game and know what is happening in the game world. A true gamer knows all about video games and not just outside stuff. You can never know what the future will look like, but we do have some idea of what technology is most likely to going to be used. What do you think 2050 will be like? Well, I'm not sure. It'll probably be, you know, more of a more of an actual put yourself in the place, you know, virtual reality holograms, all that kind of thing. But then again, that also just kind of feels like a science fiction book, so I don't know. Game systems are always being upgraded. People are always working around the world to create the newest video game. Everyone has dreams of the future and what might be in store for the video games. And maybe some of those dreams will come true. We will just have to wait and see. A lot of fun to do, even though it's work. And, and it's sometimes, there are days when you just want to beat your head against the wall. And it, because either there's some problem or some bug that you can't get rid of, it's just, something it's just frustrating it can be extremely frustrating but there's never a day that you that you walk out of the office and don't want to come back that never happens I, there are people that will stay all night long to get you know, to, to get something done or to get the problem solved and it's not even about it's not even about overtime. It's not even about people making you feel like you have to be there. It's just you, you love doing it so much that you just do whatever it takes to get the job done, you know? So, yeah, it, it's still fun. It is still fun every day. <laughs> I'm just glad I'm down on my crotch. <laughs>
can't see my movie. You know, overall, I think that if you have the right expectation and you know what you're getting into, you're going to love it.